Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're all doing well. In today's tutorial, I would like to show you how to make a boat fender key fob. It is named such because it basically looks like a boat fender, which is an item that is used to prevent boats from crashing into the dock because of the waves. Now, I have modified the basic design using the techniques that I feel comfortable with and it may also work for you. The technique to make this key fob is fairly unique and it is a great tool to have under your belt. You can easily apply it to other projects as well. As far as the supplies for this project go, you're going to need 4 cords and for your first key fob I recommend that these cords are 5 feet long. That's more than you're going to need but it is better to have more than to run out in the middle of your project. You're also going to need some duct tape scissors, a lighter and finally a rope thimble if you would like to decorate the inner side of your loop. So with this said, let's get started. To start we're going to line up our cords, find the middle point, then move up a few inches. At this point we're going to tie together or clip our four ends and then prepare them for braiding. In my case I'm going to place them into a loop to secure them. Then place two cords onto one side and two on the other. Then do the four strand diamond braid. We're going to braid these cords for a length sufficient for our loop. I'm going to braid them for about five inches, which should be more than enough. You can see the diamond pattern forming and continue until you reach 5 inches or so. Once you have the length for your loop ready, we're going to fold this braid together to form the loop. Then remove the clip if you're using one. And the next step is to take our 8 ends and tape them up together. So we're going to tape up this section in order to make the core for our key fob. I have taped up the 8 ends in order to create the core for our key fob and we're now going to take the ends and cover the taped section using a series of crown knots. You could also use wall knots but I think that the crown knot gives you more control over the look of your key fob. So to start, we're going to spread apart our cords. Remember to put them in a proper color sequence that you would like. And we're now going to start tying our crown knot in a counterclockwise fashion. So take one of the cords and go over the cord to your left. Then take the next cord and go over the cord to your left. And so on. Taking each of the cords and going in a counterclockwise fashion over the next cord that you're using. The last cord is going to go into the first cord that we used like this and with this we have our first crown knot made. We're now going to very slowly tighten it up, slowly because it doesn't tighten fast, you need to do it by tightening it gradually. Once you have tightened your first crown knot, it is time to do the next one, which is done exactly the same way. So travel in a counterclockwise fashion, taking one cord, 
and placing it over the next chord in a counterclockwise direction. Once you have all of your chords done, we tighten up the knot, then place another one on top of it. As you can see, tightening the crown knots takes a bit of time and patience, but in my opinion it is well worth it. Continue all the way until you have covered your taped up section. I have covered the taped up section using crown knots and we're now going to finish this key fob using a multi-strand Spanish ring knot. So take one of your chords and create a loop. With your next chord go through the top of this previous loop and this will create a new loop. Then take your third chord again on the right and go through the second loop. We are going to travel around our key fob and prepare each of our chords the same way. When we come to our first chord that we used, we place it into the last loop that we made and we can now move on to the next step in tying the multi-strand Spanish ring knot. We are going to grab one of the chords and go under the chord to our left, then place our chord towards the top going parallel to the chord to our left. We're then going to take the next chord, go under the chord to your left, and again go parallel to the chord to your left. And then the next chord goes under the chord to your left and towards the top. And then the next chord on your left again goes under and towards the top. We do this with all of the chords until we reach the last one. Our last chord is done exactly the same way, so it goes under one and then goes parallel and towards the top, like this. We're now going to take one of the chords and go towards the bottom side with an under 2 over 2 sequence. So we're going to travel towards the left, going under 2 and then over 2. Then take your next chord on the left and again go under 2 and then over 2. Then take your next chord on the left and again under 2 over 2. And again under 2 over 2. Continue the same way until you reach your last chord.
And now with your last chord, do the exact same thing. So under 2 over 2. We are now at our last step in tying the multi-strand Spanish ring knot. This one is really easy. What we're going to do is take one of the chords. It doesn't matter where you start. And we're going to feed it through to the top. So like this. Then take your next one on the left and again go up and through the top. With this, we have tied a multi-strand Spanish ring knot. We're now going to tighten it up slightly, then finish our key fob. I have tightened up my Spanish ring knot, and we're now going to hide the ends on the bottom of this knot, basically traveling down under the Spanish ring knot. So take one of your chords, go past the next chord in a counterclockwise direction, then down and under the Spanish ring knot. Like this. We're then going to take the next chord in the counterclockwise direction, go past your next chord, and down under the Spanish ring knot. Then take the next chord in the counterclockwise direction. Go over the next chord. And then down and under the Spanish ring knot. We're basically creating a crown knot on top of our Spanish ring knot. We're going to do the exact same thing to the rest of the chords, at which point we have come to the end of the key fob tutorial. Once you have tucked your ends onto the bottom of your Spanish ring knot, all there's left to do is to cut and meld them and your key fob is complete. You can also place a rope timbo on the inside of your loop in order to protect it from the wear and tear of everyday use. So guys, I hope that this design of a key fob is appealing to you. It is a great technique and tool to have in your arsenal. With that said, thank you for joining me and see you next time.